Hey, it's James here. If you're looking to get booked on high profile podcasts, uh, then watch this video to the end because I'm gonna be talking about how you can make a one sheet to talk about your best skills and your best knowledge and help you get booked on really high end podcasts and also giving you a few tips and techniques and tricks along the way to making sure that you land those perfect interviews. Hi, so if you're new to this channel, uh, my name is James Mulvaney. I'm founder of Radio.co, Podcast.co, Matchmaker.fm and Q Podcasts. And I love creating videos like this, talking about how you could get booked onto podcasts as a guest, grow your audience. So remember to hit that subscribe button uh, for more videos just like this one. And today I wanted to talk about the podcast one sheet. What is a one sheet? Uh, it's kind of just like a CV or a resume, but it's something that you actually go out and send to podcasts. And it basically just says to the podcaster why they should book you as a guest what sort of things you could talk about. And there's kind of a technique of getting this right. And there's certain things that podcasters, especially top level podcasters, will kind of expect to see. So I wanted to run through a few of those things uh, in this video to help you get the best results. And I also wanted to introduce you to a tool, Matchmaker, which I'll talk to you about at the end of this video and how it can kind of help you get booked on more podcasts and kind of bypass some of these things as well. So I wanted to talk through five key elements. The first thing is a headshot. I know it sounds weird, it's a podcast, it's audio only, right? But having a friendly face at the top of your one sheet is always important because it kind of gives the person a feel for who you are. It doesn't have to be professional. You know, you can take a really good quality photo on your phone make sure that you're smiling, make sure that you look approachable and friendly. Um, perhaps you're involved in a professional sector, you might wanna consider wearing a suit or something for that, completely up to you, but make sure you get your personality across in the headshot. And it can also help to hire a professional photographer to help you with this as well, um, if you wanna get that extra edge. Uh, but having a series of press photos can also be useful as well. And in fact, whenever I get booked on podcasts, the one thing that people ask me for is a headshot, and that's because they quite often want to use my headshot as part of the publicity for their episode. So they might push it up as part of the cover art, or they might have it embedded in a blog post. It completely depends on the podcaster, but having at least one good headshot is important. Ideally have a folder full of press images that you could send out to podcasters. Okay, secondly is your biography or your bio. I recommend between sort of 500 and 1,000 words, because bear in mind, people will often copy and paste this bit of information. You need to include things like, you know, what you're currently doing, e.g. your position, uh, you know, what you've achieved as part of your career or, or through your journey, perhaps some qualifications you've got, who you work with or what sort of things you like to do, and also, you know, your core skills. You know, what are you gonna be able to bring to the table? And you need to communicate all of that information in your bio. I'd recommend writing it in third person because as I mentioned, quite often podcasters will actually just copy and paste this. So this will be something that stays stick on the show notes, which is basically the description of the episode, or they might post it as part of a blog post when your episode goes live, or they might put elements of it on social media. So spend some time getting it right. Obviously make sure that you spell checked it. Obviously make sure that it reads well and it presents you in a really good light. And obviously try and keep it succinct. Don't go on too much. People don't want to know your whole life story. And also remember that you've got the podcast to tell them about that as well, right? Uh, so try and keep it uh, relatively to the point, but get across the key points of who you are, what it is you do and how you can help others. Number three is the suggested interview topics. Quite often when you approach a podcaster, uh, especially if their show is uh, very specific about a certain subject, it might give them a good idea of what sort of things that you can talk about. So for example, you're approaching podcasts that are about marketing. Well, your interview areas of expertise might be, for example, search engine optimization or pay-per-click advertising. So what you need to do is try and truncate what you know into topics, or even if you can actually write some suggested questions of the sort of questions you might be able to answer and help people with. And ultimately, hopefully, they'll land upon you as the expert that they want to chat to on those topics. Number four, links to other shows you've been on. Perhaps you've done some live streams, perhaps you've done some videos on YouTube, or perhaps you've been on other podcasts. It's always handy to have a small bank of links so people can listen and watch other content that you've been on. It gives them a good idea of how you talk, your style, and also uh, your knowledge about specific topics. So it's always good to provide some links to previous examples of podcasts that you've been on, or as I say, other videos, you've bits of content you've created on the internet. Really, really useful. As I say, don't go too many, maybe pick like four or five highlights of content that you've created or co-created with other people. And finally, number five, your contact information. It sounds obvious, 
but you need to give people the option to be able to reach out to you with questions. It's really useful to include obviously an email address. You might want to consider your phone number because people say might want to WhatsApp you or other social media or chat platforms you use. But also what's really useful is a booking link. Uh, I use a service called Calendly. Uh, there's also Harmonizely and various other platforms which allow you to actually put a booking link onto a PDF or send it to them via email or wherever you're posting this. And they can actually schedule time in your diary. This is really, really useful when it comes to things like syncing time zones up because quite often these days your podcast interview will be remote. It won't necessarily always be someone in the same time zone as you. They might be in a different country. They might be on the other side of the world. So these booking links make it really, really easy to sync your diaries up. So once you've put your one sheet together and you can do that using a design tool like Canva or you can even just do it using something like Microsoft Word or Google Docs, the best thing to do is export it as a PDF. Um, I'd recommend hosting that PDF somewhere so you can actually just link directly to it. So upload it onto your website uh, or put it on Dropbox or something like that. And then you can begin contacting podcasts. Now, fantastic way to reach out to lots and lots of podcasts who are looking for guests just like you is matchmaker.fm. You know, it's a platform that I run and we have a community now of nearly 50,000 members. So really, really exciting community. We've been responsible for generating hundreds of thousands of podcast interviews. So if you're looking to get booked on podcasts, I suggest you go and check out matchmaker.fm. And finally, if you're interested in downloading a template so you can put together your one sheet in record time, uh, I've actually got a template over on my website, which you could download for free at jamesm.com slash one sheet. Thanks very much for watching. I'll speak to you soon. Thank you.